All right, reservation dogs, everybody. Hey, oh Billy Chokadee. I hope I said that right. They told me a hundred times how to say that. And then, then they were like, well, even if you fuck it up, it's still funny because it fits your character. Um, thanks for the uh, reservation dog dogs role. Been a fan since way before that, though. First time writing a dumbass message to probably Andrew. Uh, yeah, he's the one who reads these. Or whoever checks uh, these things. Um, just finishing watching your episode and had a nice little cry. Old puss boy here, he says. I always knew you were one in the legend. You have no idea how much this show means to me. Uh, my best friend took the Daniel route in 2010. Oh, no. And a few days after that, my brother got into a drinking and driving accident and didn't make it. Jesus Christ. And since then, I've been pretty lost. I found the MM podcast around 2015 and it has helped me an insane amount. I even quit drinking the day you did. Get the fuck out of here. I only lasted 100 days, though. I've done that. Yeah, but dude, you did 100 days, so you got it in you. Um, I just wanted to finally send you a thank you note, and I don't want to get I don't want you to get too big of a head, so I'll just cut it off here. Thanks and go fuck yourself from a little res kid in Saskatchewan, Canada. P.S. I really hope you're in more than one episode. Uh, well, if I'm smart, I won't go back again because I think I pulled it off. <laughs> go back, shit the bed on the next episode. It was just a fluke. Um, yeah, that's a funny thing. Yeah, I... I can't believe I, uh, you know, I get a lot of, you know, scripts and stuff sent my way. And, and this was the one that really stood out, just the writing in it and the ride that they were taking people on. Um, you know, I'm so glad I took that role. I think it's amazing to be a part of a show as great as that. And... um and then for all actors coming up, I'm telling you, just always fuck taking the money unless you actually have to have. Always take the best thing. Okay? If you're always taking the money, I feel like you're stacking bricks. But if you're always taking the best thing, it's like you're building a wall. You know what I mean? Do a little comedy, do a little drama, do a little sci-fi, go back to the comedy. And then they start getting this idea that you can actually act. Okay? If you keep playing the same fucking person churning butter, that's, that's all they see. Um, so I want to thank, uh, this person and everybody else who watched. And I really want to thank the show and all the writers and everybody for, you know, who's getting who you just, all I have to do is say what they wrote, <laughs> stand on a piece of tape and then they edit it and they make me look great. So, and I can continue to not have a real job and never really work in life, um, uh, which was the goal of mine. I had real jobs. I had real jobs that I did not enjoy that were real work. I did a little bit of landscaping. I was a, I was a fucking grunt on a construction site. I landed, I lasted like eight days on that. I was just like, I, I don't have it. I, 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 I could, I'm smart enough that I could hang around here and eventually become competent, but I do not have a gift for this. So I walked. Oh, Billy, fucking see you later. Um, Oh, by the way, when I was looking at those things, watching people rebuild transmissions, I found this amazing fucking video of a 1980 Ford F-250 that had they found it was sat in a heated garage or warehouse for 40 years and only had 76 miles on it. It was fucking gorgeous. Gorgeous. Had a couple little scratches on it for people walking by it. I, I didn't really understand the story as to why it stayed that way. Um, but other than the tires just being flat from sitting there, you know, they had to get new tires on it. Um, it was gorgeous, man. Absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what it is about old pickup trucks I can trucks and shit like that. I can look at those things forever. I never grew out of like having Tonka trucks and being a little kid and seeing... Like I thought like the guy, the milkman, the garbage man, anybody who drove a truck, I thought was like the, was, they were like Paul Bunyan. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. Um, anyway, I wonder if my son's going to like Tonka trucks. He's such a sweet kid. Always comes up and he gives you a hug. And then if he's not doing that, he just is destroying stuff. 
So I feel like I have like a nice, well-balanced kit here. Um, supersonic air travel. Oh, I think I know what you're going to say because I saw an advertisement for it at Newark Airport. Hey, Billy Goat of Comedy. Oh, thank you. Um, been catching up on the podcast since I discovered it a couple years ago, but this is my first time writing in. I heard the recent episode on nine thirteen twenty one where you briefly talked about supersonic flight. You mentioned that it was discontinued after the crash and hasn't been used again at a commercial level, uh, I thought. He goes, since you are a fan of aviation, I thought you might be interested to know that it's actually coming back soon. I don't know if you consider this soon. United Airlines, I saw this ad. I actually took a picture of it and sent it to Vinnie Brand, who's eventually going to be on this podcast. Vinnie Brand, the club owner of uh, the Stress Factory, um, we shared a common dream to fly the Concord to France or to London or whatever. And I took a picture of that and sent it to him when I saw it. United Airlines is going to be reintroducing supersonic flight in 2029. So that's eight years away. I will be 61 years old. Holy shit. Wow, man. 53 to 61. That's a quick, oh, that's a quick ride. Um, who gives a shit? I'm fucking enjoying myself. I I, I don't care about uh, age anymore as far as like, that's a great thing about becoming, if you if you get older and you just embrace being older and just sort of let yourself become an old man, I'm not saying like, you know, give up. Um, and you understand that you have no control of aging, even though you always know that when you truly give into that, that you can't stop time, you know, so, but no one can stop you from enjoying it. So as long as you're enjoying it, you know, there's kind of like, I don't know. Like I, I picture laying on my deathbed as being peaceful and smiling and thinking about all the fun that I had. That's what I'm hoping. Um, that is the goal. Uh, anyway, huge fan of everything you do. Thank you so much for all of it. And congrats on your self-development. You're an inspiration to other knuckleheads. I am a knucklehead. I am a recovering meathead. That's exactly what I am. Uh, like myself who wants to live their best life. Basic white girl voice. I really want all you other meatheads out there to live your best life. You know, when white girls say living their best life, it means they're 100% focusing on themselves so they can live the best life possible regardless of who has to suffer. <laughs> Anyway, he says, but seriously, you and the podcast have been there for me through some rough times. I appreciate you. Thanks again and go fuck yourself. You know, that really means a lot to me that uh, there's other people that are fucked up out there and that you get something out of this. Um, I, I figure it's just the fact that you hear me trying. Um, all right, let's read about supersonic flight here. Oh, my God. United adding supersonic speeds with new agreement to buy aircraft from boom, supersonic well, what do they want for a supersonic jet? Maybe me and all the podcast listeners, we can all go in. We can all go in and buy a supersonic jet. Imagine the scheduling. It's booked for the next fucking 18 months. Chicago and Denver, June 3rd, 2029, 2021. Sorry, United Airlines. Oh, that's where it announced. I guess that's their hubs. Oh, would you look at that fucking... It looks like a dart. Oh my God, is that a sexy fucking plane? United will purchase 15 of Boom's Overture Airlines. What a great name. Once Overture meets United's demanding safety, operating, and sustainability requirements with an option for an additional 35 aircrafts, the companies will work together on meeting those requirements before delivery. Once operational, Overture is expected to be the first large commercial aircraft to be net zero carbon from day one. Uh, can you buy stock in this company? Optimized to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, it is slated to roll out in 2025, fly in 2026, and expected to carry passengers by 2029. United and Boom will also work together to accelerate production of greater supplies of SAF, sustainable aviation fuel. Isn't that exciting? Where, where would this fly? 
You know, it's funny. This is, I'm going to keep doing stand up until you can fly supersonic anyway, anywhere. <laughs> Just go to fucking Des Moines, Iowa. Right? Supersonic is like north of what speed? What is, what is, that's breaking the speed of sound, which we all know is 700, what, how many miles? Speed of sound supersonic. Uh, the speed of sound is 768 miles an hour. So just remember six, seven, eight, except you flip seven and six, seven, six, eight, 768 miles an hour, which means you could get, you know, once you get up to that speed, you could fly across the country. I would think in about three hours as the crow flies, right? The Mach number is the ratio of the speed of the aircraft to the, to speed of sound. Okay, let's learn about Mach. Let's come on, people. Let's do this. Mach speed explained. All right. By definition, Mach is, number is a ratio of the speed of a body (parentheses aircraft) to the speed of sound in the undisturbed medium through which the body is traveling. Undisturbed medium through which the body? How is it undisturbed? You know, there's the friction of the air it's flying through. All right. Is it, it is said that the aircraft is flying Mach 1 if the speed is equal to the speed of sound. Okay, so then is Mach 2 twice the speed of sound? Well, now they're saying speed of sound is 717 miles an hour. All right, why do I try to be smart? All right, 31-year-old virgin, honeymoon advice. Hey, Bill, I'm a lady listener and enjoy your advice section of your podcast the most. Um, I have an idea for you. You should reboot the 40-year-old virgin and make it a fucking woman. That's what you got to do. Uh, my, my fiance and I are both from California, just in case you think we are from the Bible Belt region. Um, I didn't. I didn't. There's a lot of virgins that are that, well, you know, either through religious beliefs or maybe you got touched when you were a kid and you don't like being touched and you're a late bloomer. You know, there's people that are asexual. There's just, you know, there's a whole bunch of shit that could have happened. I don't judge anybody when it comes to that stuff. All right. Uh, we met two years ago and finally getting married by the end of this year. We both are fairly conservative. Hence, we've both never done it before. What is your advice for two 31-year-old virgins who will finally do it for the first time on their honeymoon? Oh, my God. This is two rookie quarterbacks facing off in week one. Have a nice day with your family. Um, oh, number one, don't put any pressure on yourselves. This is both your first rodeos. I would say have fun and uh, you don't really have to do it the first night. If it's too much, if you're freaking out or whatever, you can start. I would just, both of you, you know, just talk about before you do it. This is a monumental thing for you if you waited this long. And I would just, yeah, just really be like fucking, you know, the whole thing in a relationship from ground zero up is you have to be communicating. So um, I don't have any advice. You're going to figure it out. It's nature. You're going to figure it out. Just have fun. Enjoy yourself. If you're not enjoying yourself, just say, you know, maybe maybe we do it the next time or whatever. Just, you know, just, I mean, th this is above my pay grade here, people. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what, okay? It's a beautiful thing. You guys are going to enjoy yourselves. And uh, I think about, you know, a week into it, you know, you're probably both going to have a difficulty holding down a job because you're going to be wanting to bang. <laughs> So congratulations to both of you. Have fun. All right. Girlfriend tried to break up with me. Hey, Bill from over the hill. Oh, man, I watched this fucking, you know, my wife likes watching the murder shows before she goes to bed, just like that great SNL sketch. She either watches that or she watches dumb reality. So we had on this, I swear to God, a game show about reality shows. It was the stupidest fucking thing. People sit there and somebody goes like, will say like one of the reality show stars says something to the other cast members and they bleep out the word so you can't see what it is. 
And then you have to try and guess. They tell you what the word was and then you say true or false. I swear to God. I was like, I can't watch this shit. So she puts on this fucking murder show. And it's just of this beautiful, I'll, I'll fast forward through all of this shit. This beautiful girl gets killed by some fucking creep she meets online. And it turns out this creep is one of these kids who can't get fucking laid. They used to be called nerds. Now they've, they're like Halliburton. They gave themselves a new fucking name. All right. And I don't, you know, I don't know what their deal is. They end up getting mad at these women because they can't get laid. You know, when I was a kid, it was called a slump. Everybody went through a slump. So if you're out there right now, you, the last thing you want to do is start hating women because you're just going to be turning them off. And now you're, just, you're, 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 you're trying too hard. All right? You got to go watch Fast Times at Richmond High. You don't care if she comes, stays, lays, or prays. Yeah, you got the attitude, right? You got to fucking self a little vibe, you know? These fucking lunatics. This kid goes out and he, he kills this poor girl. And then, like, he took video of him doing it in pictures. And these fucking assholes online were sending it to uh, her parents. And what fucking killed me is there's no protection for the parents. And then the people that were writing mean shit, when they showed their mean tweets, they're blurring out their Twitter handles. Like, so you're protecting the assholes and not the parents. It was one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen. And that's the last thing we watch. And then we go to bed. It's like, what, what the, f- I, I just don't know. I, I just looked at my wife. I was like, well, that was uplifting. Yeah. I really like humanity now. Big fan of people. Our girlfriend tried to break up with me. Uh, Hey, Bill, from over the hill. I was dating this girl. Everything was going well for the first few months until the red flag started to show up. It seemed everywhere we went in her hometown, she had a story how she and her ex had sex in that particular place. She told you that? Oh, Jesus, dude. I mean, you got to walk when that happens. All right. Could you could you be saying that to her? Hey, my last girlfriend uh, whose boobs were just a little bigger than yours. I bent her over that fucking rock over there. What? What? What did I say? Um, All right. He goes on to say, um, I don't know about anyone else, but the last thing you want to hear on a date with your girlfriend at the local pizza pizza joint is how she used to bang it out with old Dick and Harry on the same counter as they rolled out the dough. Yeah, when I explained this bothered me, she said how I was jealous and needed to get over myself. Yeah, this is a toxic fucking person that is hurting you and now is blaming the victim. Dude, I, this is like a fucking no-brainer. Just, I don't even need to, need to read the rest of this. I will. Uh, that this is, this is one of the easiest decisions. A few months went by, and one day she told me some lady on social media was massaging her, you know, messaging is what you wanted to write, asking if we were together but would not disclose disclose who it was. I told her I had no clue who would do such a thing. Later, she claimed it was an old co-worker of mine, but it seemed out of character for that particular person, so I didn't follow up. The next few months, I would start to receive strange messages. On this, Is this your psycho girlfriend doing this to you? The next month, few months, pretending to be somebody else. The next few months, I would start to receive strange messages on social media and through text messages from girls claiming they met me on dating apps and wanted to see how I was doing. I didn't respond to any of these. Yeah, this is your psycho girl. She's got a burner phone. Jesus Christ, this is some fucking Glenn Close fatal attraction shit. Then one day, my girlfriend once again claimed someone had messaged her on social media. This time, the person claimed I was unfaithful, which started a huge fight between us where she had asked me if I had been seeing anyone while we were dating. I told her I had not, but when we initially met, I was talking to someone else but had stopped once we started seeing each other more exclusively. She claimed this was cheating and she had lied about someone messaging her because she wanted to prove I'm a no-good scumbag and we broke up. Well, there you go, dude. And listen, let her think that. This is how you break up with the psycho, okay? You're a no good scumbag. Just like, you know, act like you're fighting her, but let her win. And then she leaves, change your number, change the locks, maybe change your zip code. Just get the fuck out of it. 
Anyways, a few days after, I decided to contact my former co-worker to ask if my then-girlfriend had ever contacted her. She said nobody had ever messaged her. She didn't even know I was dating. By this point, I found out my ex was already in a relationship with her ex. Oh, that's great. Okay. So she just used that as a way to get it. Break. Wow, how fucking elaborate. This is why they got to teach people, kids, how to break up with people. If I was ever a junior high or a high school teacher, I would say, hey, listen, you guys are in the beginning of dating. It's great. But one of the things that I wish they told me is how to break up with somebody and just say, listen, we need to talk. You sit down and talk and you say, listen, I'm not happy in this. Okay. I'm just not happy. I I like you, but I don't like you enough to keep going. And you just get that information out there. And then they cry and they flip out and blah, 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 blah. But you don't back down from how you feel. And then that's it. I'm not happy. And you just get the fuck out of it. You get out of it. Instead of having to create phony accounts. Anyway, by this point, I found out my ex was already in a relationship with her ex. She would always brag about banging in all these locations. Yeah. Yeah. So she probably cheated on you. And this fucking guy probably cheated on her. And uh, he'll cheat on her again. But guess what? You're out of it. You're, you're, you've been extracted from the situation like an undercover cop who, you know, they're getting too close and they have to pull you off the fucking case. You're out. You're out. Anyway, he goes, I think it's safe to say she made up contacting my former, co- my former co-worker. Absolutely. And I also believe she had been the one contacting me from the strange number and social media accounts. Absolutely. What do you think, Bill? Was she behind all of this in an effort to end the relationship? Yes, and she's batshit crazy, okay? And she's going to go back to that fucking other dude that the only reason why he's banging her is because she's batshit crazy and is fucking wild in the rack, okay? But neither you or him want to have kids until she, with, with anything like that until that thing figures out what the fuck it is, all right? That's a wild animal, Okay, you ever see when they get an animal in a fucking trap, right? And they fix it, and then they try to set it free, and it fucking jumps out of the cage and then jumps into the cab and starts scratching up the driver or the fucking doctor that helped. That's what the fuck you had. Let that thing run into the forest. Um, that is it. And I'll tell you, wherever you met that woman, do not meet your next girlfriend there. You're going to need to start fishing in a different pond. Um. Wow, man. Fucking psycho. You dodged a bullet. You dodged a bullet. Anybody that ends up with that, if she stays where she is and doesn't grow as a person or figure out what the fuck is wrong with her, dude, I mean, dude, you will you will hold in, like, nuclear waste in your fucking hand and, she, you know, this other guy's carrying it now. Good for him. Have fun, buddy. Have fun. I am out. See you later. Seacrest, out. All right, girlfriend dresses like a whore. All right, dear Bill. Um, yeah, you can't, you're not allowed really, like people are like, stop clothes shaming her. And it's like, well, you do. I mean, I would love to inter- interview like a prostitute and just be like, you know, with all the mainstream women dressing like prostitutes now, is it hard to like, you know, figure out what you're going to wear every night? All right, dear Bill, first time writer, long time listener. I've been listening to a girl for three years and she's getting antsy about us taking the next step. She's awesome, a great conversationalist and gorgeous. So what's the issue, you might ask? Well, Bill, she dresses like a whore. I'll go fuck yourself, dude. You've been with her for three years. You've been with her for three fucking years. Did she just start dressing like a whore? Because if this has always been an issue, you've been wasting her time. But if you're young, I understand because you don't know how to break up with people and you start thinking, well, will I ever get one as pretty as this again? Uh, I, maybe I can make myself love her. Anyways, well, Bill, she dresses like a whore. Now, I know this might sound judgmental, but I don't, I don't mean it to. Dude, having a gorgeous woman, woman that dresses like a whore is a situation for a guy when you go out in public. All right? Because she's going to attract male attention And somebody, one of those asshole guys is going to cross a fucking line. And then all of a sudden you got to step up like you got fucking Steven Seagal, you know, skills. Right. 
Is that too old? Uh, Joe Rogan skills. All right, there you go. I updated it. Okay, not comparing Joe's fucking art to his. I don't, I'm not in that world, all right? Both of them can kick my ass, okay? There we go. All right. Um, so what's the issue, you might ask? Uh, okay, all right. She dresses like horror. However, I want you to imagine the worst case scenario on this one. When I first met her, I thought this was a one-time thing, but every day she wears skirts that end at the top of her ass, see-through tops that show her nipples or short shorts with no panties that reveal her vagina. She even went to a costume party in only body paint and a thong. Buddy, she's been doing this the whole time. She's been doing this the whole time. So evidently you've been having fun, but now you're like, I don't want the mother of my kids walking down the street with their clam hanging up. Is that what the issue is? Anyway, I don't believe men should tell women what to wear. Why? Women tell guys what to wear all the fucking time. You're going to wear that? You need to update your wardrobe. I mean, what is this? My favorite shirt? Get rid of it. Um, But she dresses like this in front of my friends and male relatives, and I feel as if I've gotten to the point where it's emasculating for me. I 100% understand that. My friends stare at her like they want to fuck her despite me standing right there. The way she dresses attracts the worst attention, absolutely. And I've almost been in countless fights because of it. Yes, guys have tried grabbing her even while I'm standing there and I'm a big guy. She claims that men are the problem and that it's just nudity. Furthermore, she claims that she can dress how she wants because a man doesn't own her. Um, Yeah, all of that is true. She can dress how she wants. A man doesn't own her. This is all about how you feel about it. And if this is a deal breaker for you, I would get the fuck out of this. Um, This isn't new either. She told me that her mother has been screaming at her 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 entire life to put on clothes, trying to understand her. I guess that she might be a nudist that prefers spaces where you don't have to wear clothes. Well, yeah, if she's in there, I would think that that's a safer space. Um. Because everybody's naked. You're all on the same playing field. Are there less perverts at a nudist place because the guy's balls are right there? He doesn't even have underwear and pants to block the kick. I mean, your nuts are just hanging out. I would think that you'd be on your best behavior. (laughs) Uh, I offered to take her there, but she replied that she only liked to be naked in places where she's not supposed to be. All right, so she gets off on it. All right, this is like her thing. So you either have to be okay with this well, you got to watch. Judging by your answer, I've told her that if she were a man that loved to show his genitals, she would be labeled a pervert. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. But also, you know, you got to look at how we're set up uh, anatomically. Is that the word? right word? How our shit is. Our shit's hanging. We put our thing in somebody. So that's why, you know. They're receiver. We are the, I'm the decider, the doer. <laughs> I'm so in over my head here. I think it comes down to this. She, he says, she has mentioned several times that she needs to be the center of attention, which sounds like a bit of narcissism, right? Yeah, dude, you can't marry this. This is a fucking nightmare. Anyway, is it too much to add? This is the type of person that's going to have kids and is going to be competing with the attention of if you have a girl, she's going to be, first of all, she'll be dressing her girl like a fucking, your girl like a whore. All right. And then when the, your daughter gets into her teen years, she's then going to start competing with her and it's going to be a fucking nightmare. Anyway, I'm just, this is, okay. I don't have any fucking degree in anything here other than talking shit, but this is what I'm guessing. Anyway, is it too much to ask that I want to be the only one who sees her naked vagina? No, it isn't. Should I stay with her and deal with the constant negative attention from friends and onlookers or cut bait and potentially lose an awesome person otherwise? Dude, I never heard you say in any of this that you love her. I think she's fucking smoking hot and the exact fucking reason you walked up to her is the exact thing that's driving you away, which, you know, whatever you're going to say about that. It's just like... Dude, that's not, it sounds to me like you don't want your mother, the, the mother of your kids doing that. Uh, yeah. You know, she has the right to do that, absolutely. And she, you know what she needs to do? She needs to go out and find a man that's strong enough to, to have to fight half the fucking bar every time you go up to go pick up a fucking pizza. Um, yeah, dude, 
I'm going to tell you something, man. My wife is as cool as it fucking comes, all right? And marriage is still a lot of work, especially when you have kids. If you're already having these fucking issues, if you're already having these issues, and you're not even fucking married yet, dude, it's not going to get any easier, okay? And I also think somebody like this is not going to age well in that they're not going to accept aging, all right? And then what you're going to have is somebody with a Botox clam hanging out of the bottom of their fucking mom jeans that they decided to cut off when you're going over there for a fucking play date. Dude, you don't need this shit, okay? Um, so I would break up with her and just say, yeah, listen, um, yeah, the way you dress, uh, I can't handle it anymore. And, uh, but I don't want to tell you how to dress. I think you should be free to dress the way you want to dress. But, um, I think you need to go out and find a man that is comfortable with that. And then if she tries to be like, well, I don't want to lose you. I'll only dress like half a whore. No, don't do that because now she's being what she isn't. Okay. And now you're doing to her what most women do to men, which is they try to change you into what the fuck they want rather than finding what they want, which is what you need to do. Okay. This look, you're doing something right. If she's gorgeous and you landed it, you can land another gorgeous woman that doesn't walk around with the fucking tits and ass hanging out. All right. And you're not into it. So you answered your own question. So I would fucking walk. I would walk. And then, you know, I don't want to predict this, but you might lose another one of your friends <laughs> once she becomes single. And I, you know something, dude? She can fucking have her, all right? He can have her. I've been there too. I've been there too. And you know what you do when you handle that? You just be really cool. You be really fucking cool with your buddy. And it'll drive her nuts. <laughs> all right, that's it. Go fuck yourselves. I will talk to you. Uh, I'll check in on you on Thursday. Um, uh, Oh, here's, here's my prediction. Even though I didn't take him, uh, I like Green Bay tonight, Monday Night Football, and I'm going to tell you why. They got their asses whipped last week by the Saints. The Saints showed up and got their asses kicked against Carolina. They had a letdown game, and I think the Packers bounced back because I was watching the NFL, and Bill Cower, Phil Simms, Boomer Esiason, Jim Brown, uh, the Burleson guy, they all fucking read him the riot act that he looked like he was on the sideline and he didn't even give a shit anymore. So I think they lit a candle under his ass and he's going to come out firing. And uh, I take the Packers, which I didn't. But by the way, also, I went one and three this week. So why would you listen to me? All right, go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.